Hey folks, welcome to the very first episode of Confab Bedship, a photography talk show wherein I sit down and talk to photographers who not only inspire us but also motivate us with their visuals. This is a photography talk show which is dedicated to the unheard stories from the photographers themselves. In this very first episode, I talk to one of India's finest wildlife photographers, Dhritiman Mukherjee. So we start all the way from the point where he started his professional wildlife photography up to the current day wherein he just released his book, The Magical Biodiversity of India. So let's get started and see what Dhritiman has to offer us. Fantastic having you here in Bangalore yes. and uh, it was really nice meeting you and catching up for the book launch last year. Yeah, same here. And um, we'll start off with the main thing first. So we were here last night in Nature in Focus for the book launch which is Magical Biodiversity of India. So for the folks who don't know, Dhriti just launched his first book which is called Magical Biodiversity of India. Uh, which is authored by Dr. Asar sir and uh, all the images in this book are by Dhriti and we'll just quickly catch up with him on uh, all the things regarding his book and things beyond like wildlife photography. So Dhriti, to start with, how did this whole book uh, come up with? Actually, we were we working on this book uh, uh, from 2012. End, end of 2012 because we planned it not sorry not 12 2013 actually okay. so we were uh, planning on this uh, book uh, from Narkondam when we met Dr. Romani in uh, that place we stayed uh, for 15 days mm -hmm. there and we discussed on this because I was working on entire India uh, I mean from I mean all over the places and uh, all kind of habitats so that's why I had a stock of uh, all kind of images, and uh, I, uh, so we were thinking, why, why, why don't you put all this together, so that uh, at least uh, people can know that uh, India is a great place for biodiversity. So yesterday I was telling uh, during the function. No? So uh, I mean, when I started, the idea was like India's biodiversity means elephants, tiger, bear, I mean the, all the prominent mammals only and few birds. Yeah. And when I started traveling and started uh, photography, I realized it's actually not. We, we have a lot of things. Yeah. And I found we have everything. We have mountain, highest mountain of the world. We have desert. We have a 7,000 kilometer coastal line. Yeah. We have rainforest. And northeast India is uh, quite, I mean, northeast has quite virgin areas also. I mean, so we, we have all kind of forests, it's kind of a mini world. Yeah. So if, if somebody is thinking to see into the world and it is not possible for him, then one can see India. Yeah. So that one can have idea on how the earth is, we have everything. So I just wanted to put this, all these things together in a book so that... Uh, uh, common people can, can know mm -hmm. that uh, the actual biodiversity of our country. So, in fact, like last night I spent some time going through this book and uh, I realized that there is nothing that which is not covered which is in this book. Yeah, we, yeah. because we covered uh, from the, uh, we could have done uh, uh, according to some biome, but we divided in the entire country into region Yeah. so that we could include everything. So the folks uh, who want to have a look at this book or even want to grab a copy, I'll, I'll put a link in the description of this video. You can pick this up from the BNHS uh, website. So the link will be provided in the description of uh, this video. Also from Oxford, actually. So, Oxford. Oh, yeah. Yeah, also from the o Oxford uh, on it. So Dhriti, uh, let's drift a little bit away from uh, the book and yeah. go to your main stuff, which is wildlife photography. So from what I know and quite a few people know, you were into mountaineering and you were a teacher at one point of time in your life. And then now uh, you've been regarded as the only professional wildlife photographer in India. So how, this, how did this transition happening happen from being a mountaineering guy to being a wildlife photographer? Well, uh, I, I started traveling from, from my, uh, I mean, when I was one with my parents mm -hmm. and everywhere we used to travel. And after finishing my school, mm -hmm. I started trekking and then uh, started mounting uh, from a mountain club called Climber Circle in, in Calcutta. Mm -hmm. So the, that that part was definitely it was my hobby, 
Abhi means I really enjoyed this outdoor things, uh, rock climbing and uh, trekking and uh, mountaining expeditions. So, and I started photography in 97. And uh, uh, the thing is, uh, uh, from 98, I did a course on uh, ecology and environment. So, I, I got some interest in uh, wildlife. Otherwise, I had no relation with even uh, with biology because I left biology after 10. My fourth subject was statistics because I'm purely I was a uh, physics mathematics guy. So, I just uh, left biology. It was not even in, in my school. The statistics was not even in my school. I just introduced the subject to avoid biology. Okay. So, few, few of my friends actually... Uh, took statistics as a fourth subject okay. and uh, so the thing is I was doing outdoor things, mountaineering then uh, I the, my only income source was uh, actually I used to do uh, I mean uh, teaching privately I mean it was a kind of private tuition but I, I really uh, was enjoying teaching physics, mathematics and sometimes statistics so it, I had some heterogeneous group of students. I used to teach, uh, uh, I mean, the plus two students, then uh, joint entrance students, uh, become and MCOM students for uh, this uh, stat and math. So I just, uh, so that that was different different uh, part. So I I continued uh, teaching up to two thousand one. So when I finished this uh, this course, now this uh, ecology masters in ecology and environment. I I just uh, I thought uh, let's take this uh, uh, I mean I mean I got interest in wildlife and I started bird watching mm -hmm. with Prakriti Samshad and I realized uh, I can't do uh, I mean so called five to ten office job because from ninety four I was traveling a lot. Mm -hmm. and it is not that after photography I started traveling, but I mean after '94 actually I started. I was traveling a lot, and uh, it it became a habit <coughs> for me. Okay. So I thought if I go for a job, I will miss this life. Mm -hmm. So I I just uh, synchronized with all these things: this uh, the ecology environment, then mountaineering, and I started photography in '97, mm -hmm. and I decided to take it as a profession in 2001 knowing nothing i just thought let's take it as a profession and i got into the soup <laughs> but how's been the journey so far 2001 till 2001 actually uh, if i tell the truth now i just forgot all all my struggles i don't i can't remember the struggle i don't know I, I i can remember the good things only okay yeah so but what i can remember mm -hmm. even in 2006 mm -hmm. my in income from photography that was my only source of income because I left teaching in 2000 end of 2001 mm -hmm. because I thought uh, it is better to uh, you know do it uh, full heartedly mm -hmm. I I was not uh, you know if you are having some money from other side it will give you some comfort zone yeah. so if you are thinking to take something as a profession which is not uh, you, uh, you know, not uh, very uh, common or not very well known. Uh, I, I I didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. So if there was a comfort zone for me, uh, probably the effort I was putting for, for this, uh, that also, you know, that, that couldn't be uh, not in its highest stage. Yeah. So so I, I wanted to do it full heartedly. So I left teaching. So I just, uh, basically, I... I stopped all kind of earning I had that time mm -hmm. and uh, just jumped into it and realized it is very difficult, very difficult. Yeah. I, uh, what I was telling that in 2006, my income from photography was only 25,000 rupees per year. And yeah. before that, it was like 10, 12, 15. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine this five years, I I, uh, I mean, traveling uh, in a lot, lot, of, lot of cost. Mm -hmm and equipment so everything was very expensive but i don't know how i managed but i managed it because my parents uh, gave me a support and uh, i don't know i can't remember now okay. <laughs> but you are enjoying your 
wildlife protection. Yes, wildlife. I mean, from that time I'm, I was uh, traveling like 15 trips a year, 16 trips a year. Okay. So, so at least the best part of it is you can see lots of new new things. Okay. You get a chance to be surprised mm -hmm. every time, okay. and uh, and definitely the the nature is beautiful and. India is beautiful. So I was working in India and out, uh, most of the time outside this uh, heavyweight parks, lesser known areas yeah. and mountains. So, and out of all these things uh, from the city, yeah. so which I am actually not comfortable with. Mm -hmm. uh, so that way, definitely, it was superb life actually. Oh, good. Good. So last night, uh, you just mentioned mm -hmm. that you you, are, you just started off your wildlife photography concentrating on the lesser known aspects of Indian landscapes and Indian mammals because totally outside are the big parks okay and you are concentrating more main on the mountain so how did this whole idea come up to you because this is not something you started new this has been something you've been doing since a long time so you you went behind rare birds you went behind the lesser known mammals so how did this actually start off uh, when you started with the wildlife photography? Well, so uh, when I started, uh, uh, definitely the most of the work in India, uh, uh, what I saw uh, was on big mammals. Few people were there who were in research, uh, who were working on lesser known things and uh, rare and endangered species. Uh, but the number was very less. Even I can remember in 2003, 4 very few people knew about we, we, we have a ape, the hula gibbon. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, what I thought that if I, if I, uh, two things actually. Uh, the first thing is, uh, first thing is about uh, when I'm doing something, I'm doing uh, photography, what is my, what will be my contribution to the photographic world? I can contribute either from photographic point of view or to the science because, uh, uh, nature photography definitely is different, a little different from uh, other uh, kind of photographies uh, because it's, it, it, nature photography has a scientific part. Yeah. So we are do we can uh, document our ecosystem or natural world. <clears throat> so, so for me, I, I mean, it is always uh, give me pleasure if I'm contributing uh, for uh, society or science or anything. Okay. So I thought, what is done? Mm -hmm. Let's go for something else which is not done. Okay. And if you see outside India, say the the best places, Africa or you know South America, so many photographers work there. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I found India is completely undone place. Right. So I, I I thought let's uh, concentrate on our own country. I know the country and uh, and here I have a lot of things to do. So that actually triggered uh, me, I mean, and definitely uh, doing something, uh, uh, with, uh, repetition is boring for me, I mean, what to do with that. So that way I started study, studying, uh, I started seeing photographs that what is done and uh, uh, started uh, studying what is not done. So I just made a list and uh, uh, I just plan uh, the time and uh, I mean, uh, when I can work on what subject. So that way I planned uh, the entire year and I started working on, for example, this, uh, I, for this uh, Western Tragopan, I did at least six, seven trips. Okay. So I got the first shot in the wild. Okay. So that gives a pleasure. So when you are photographing something which is first time in the wild, mm -hmm. so which was not done. So, so that way, so that was the you know source of uh, uh, I mean the force which basically uh, helped me to work on new subjects. Now, continuing the same point, you said like you plan your things and now you are looking at things which is not done. So for the people who might want to know, how does your planning actually look like? So where do you look out for your information? Because there is no information on most of the species that you have worked on already. It's like no documentation or there's there are a lot of species which they didn't have any photographic documentation so yeah. how do, typically how does your planning work like so you my strongest uh, so source is uh, local people okay so i i i, I always uh, 
keep in touch with uh, all these local boys. I have my own networks, mm -hmm. and uh, definitely first I study in net that what is available. Then if somebody worked on that, uh, any scientist, scientist or uh, researcher worked on the subject, definitely I I contact with them to know what is the status. Mm -hmm. But generally I love to work very silently and slowly. Mm -hmm. I have no hurry that uh, I need to get the photos now. So even I, when I go somewhere, I just, I just uh, give some time to understand the place and the situation. Mm -hmm. So slowly, it's a slow process. So every in every trip, I learn, and then uh, it. I mean, rarely it happened that I got the photo in first trip. Okay. So I I tried several places. So you know, uh, I mean, the planning starts from internet, then from the local people and some researchers and uh, then I directly go into the field mm -hmm. and uh, when I, uh, uh, I mean, through the process of this journey, I learn and then someday I get the image. Okay. So it's all about, for me, it's all about the journey, not about the goal. Okay. So you just mentioned that you take it very slowly and it's not that very, very frustrated you get your images. So that brings to a point wherein wildlife photography is something which we all know requires a lot of patience. And you are one of those people whom I have seen on the field that when it comes to uh, patience, like you are a personification of patience. But how do you deal with this whole thing? Because we are going into high altitude, you are going deep into the rainforest and you are not getting it in a very first thing or you have done two, three trips, you not got the image what you want. But how does your mind work then? How do you Actually, you know, that? what is patience? You, I mean, have you thought, I mean, you, have you think about this or this when we tell something is i mean patience mm -hmm. that means you are doing something when uh, your your mind is uh, not uh, getting fun out of that mm -hmm. i mean what you are doing so patience means it's it's against your mind you are doing something against your mind you are waiting for something so why when you tell it as patience you are, if you are not enjoying if you are thinking now what to do and uh, you have 10 hours sitting, have, nothing is happening. So, but, but when, when generally we go for something, our mind is occupied with many things because at least the excitement is there, there is something, something may come. So, uh, for me it's patience but not also, I mean, because all the time I am enjoying. Yeah. So, when I am enjoying, so my mind is... Uh, occupied with happiness, so then it is not patience. Yeah. Patience is when you are bored with something, and now you know uh, you are uh, waiting for something, but you don't want to give that time. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a negative feeling. Okay. So, uh, but whenever uh, I, uh, I mean go, whenever I go for difficult subjects. So during that journey or during that waiting period or so that that period actually gives you a lot of things to learn. Okay. Uh, yesterday, uh, Dr. Asad was showing a lot of your journey as a photographer mm -hmm. and even we have seen all your images. So one thing is like your shot uh, high up in the sky, you have done paragliding and your shot images, you have gone deep in, in, into the ocean, mm -hmm. you are shot in rainforest, you are shot in, in desert. Okay. But what is that one place which you love the most shooting? Like you, you've been in mountains, you've been in forest. What's your personal favorite place where you like enjoy shooting most? Again, it's a difficult, difficult question for me. I really because these all are different areas, mm -hmm. and I always uh, enjoy mm -hmm. everything. I mean, even I want to train my mind mm -hmm. as I mean not to be biased on anything or any place or any species. Mm -hmm. So it is all about, uh, you know, uh, for me, if everything is equally likely. Mm -hmm. So definitely sometimes, like I'm doing, these days I'm doing, a, I'm doing more underwater. Yeah. So it is definitely giving me uh, more excitement. Mm -hmm. But uh, I also enjoy other places. It's not true that uh, when I can't compare, I don't want to compare actually. Okay. So it is, it is my philosophy that... Uh, 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 you know, uh, prioritize something. Uh, I mean, say if we tell fox, mm -hmm. fox is uh, uh, wolf is better than fox, mm -hmm. or or 
to say working on uh, amphibians is better than working on insects. So this kind of uh, biasness or priority, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> so uh, for I mean uh, working point of view also, I I enjoy everywhere. I mean. Enjoyed uh, because uh, mountain is as interesting as you know the ocean is, okay. or desert is as beautiful as rainforest is. Mm -hmm. So it uh, every every habitat has its own taste. Okay. So definitely, I love love to walk everywhere. Okay. So I, I spoke about things with respect to India when I asked you the previous question. But if you take it at a larger perspective, you are someone who has visited a lot of countries outside India. Uh, you have you've gone to Madagascar. You have shot in Kenya. And you're shot in um, Maldives. You've done a lot of underwater mm -hmm. But how do you compare the experience of shooting there and shooting in India? Like, do you see any major differences when it comes to shooting uh, in a foreign land and shooting in your own backyard, wherein you know things better? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Working in your own country is always much more comfortable. I know the people. I know the area. I know the land. Mm -hmm. I know the character of uh, from every aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, but. I mean, wherever we, I went uh, outside India, uh, the most of the countries were like India. I mean, it's not like uh, it was not the first world. So I mostly worked in uh, Africa. I worked in Papua. Yeah, uh, definitely this Madagascar. So actually, uh, I, I I I didn't uh, find any uh, difference. Uh, while shooting, mm -hmm. but the thing was all the trips I did outside India it was not as long as what I, I can do in India. So it was very short and uh, compact kind of trip. So I was uh, bound uh, to a system of, I mean that, that uh, the, the, I mean uh, under the travel, uh, uh, you know, uh, under a travel plan which was done before. Mm -hmm. So that is, uh, you like, you know, you are bound to uh, do something which actually you you were not, you may not interested on uh, uh, that to do that time. I mean, like, uh, for example, when I went to Madagascar, I was fixed days for Andhasi Bay, for Mazuala Peninsula, for Ankara, for Chikas. So I was bound. So it's not like, I mean, the freedom was less. So that is one issue. So, uh, you are someone who has explored all different types of photography, like you are shot with fisheye, and you are shot with uh, underwater housings, mm -hmm. you have used uh, telephoto lenses, and you, you have tried out every single thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. But how much of this technology growth, like things have been uh, growing exponentially, when you see in the technology market, how does this, uh, how, how has this affected you? Or like, how do you catch up with the technology and all this stuff? I'm, I'm slow with technology also. <laughs> yeah, slow, slow means it's like the my the main thing is uh, you know I, I I plan the frame, so it's not like I mean when I heard from people that bird lens or landscape lens I don't know what is that. Okay. So actually you you plan something, mm -hmm. and then you decide the lens for that. So it's it's the lens you, what you require. I mean the technology you require mm -hmm. that depends on your need mm -hmm. what you are planning or what is in your mind so you are thinking something for that you need some technology mm -hmm. so the first step is not technology i mean sometimes what we do some some technology comes and we definitely it happens like when dr drone came yeah. so then you can uh, plan and okay so now uh, this facility is here mm -hmm. so we can do something interesting from different perspective. Definitely it happens. Mm -hmm. But for me, I generally plan something and then I decide the what technology mm -hmm. I need to use. Mm -hmm. I am not, uh, you know... Take off whatever comes in the market. Yes, yes, and yes, 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 yes. Uh, never, yeah. Now that leads me to a question, like how uh, attached are you to your equipment? Like, uh, do you like take care, take care of it like a baby, or like you're just no, like not, it's there for your use? That's yeah, it. yeah, that's it. It's, I'm not that. Uh, so you're not, <laughs> you're not, to not your emotional equipment. about that. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Now, uh, one one other thing I want to talk is like uh, when it comes to wildlife photography, a uh, lot of people do it for passion, a lot of people do it for hobby, 
and there are quite a lot of people who do it for conservation right and you have been someone who has been doing it for profession i mean you, you have contributed your share of it for conservation but you've been doing it for profession that's like you earn your uh, income out of the professional aspect of wildlife photography but uh, being in a country like india how easy do you think is for someone to get into wildlife it is, it is forget about easiness it is not possible actually okay so uh, for anybody who wants to take it as profession mm-hmm. uh i mean the still photography the still nature of photography not i'm not not talking about the filming it it is not possible to survive with uh, you know the nature photography mm-hmm. if you if you have a normal life normal life in yeah. the sense i mean the the normal what norm, a normal guy expect to have in in their life so because like i only run my trips mm-hmm. i i i i don't do anything out of my income Mm-hmm. so that way i am just just uh, surviving okay. so like if i i don't pay my electric bill or i don't pay the, the other stuff so so it is uh, it is very difficult I, i i can say i mean i i don't know any way i i have i don't have any f- fixed uh, way it is actually evolving and uh, every year the uh, i mean the the income sources the from where actually i i where i uh, sell my images the all the sources have to change okay so it it, it depends on uh, uh, time it is changing very fast mm-hmm. and after digital uh, when the digital photography came the supply of images uh, mm-hmm. increased so as profession it is uh, definitely very difficult okay. but my life is fantastic so that's why i can do this okay but a lot of people see wildlife photography as a very glamorous side of things because you're always in the field you're working like you're shooting tigers elephants and all those things like so for yeah, people who want to get into such things so like yeah, just one your... one can keep it as a hobby so oh. this is a very good hobby i mean yeah. one, one, uh, definitely uh, i mean the wildlife photography has wildlife photography. no no better it is better uh, i feel mm. nothing is i mean i can't say that this is absolutely impossible so if somebody like me this is the only option for me i just mm-hmm. i kept no option for other things mm-hmm. so that's why i could uh, i mean i was even if i well, i feel if i start now i can't survive with uh, this because i started 15 years back mm-hmm. so that's why i can manage it now so for newcomers i just suggest uh, go uh, keep it for hobby mm-hmm. don't go for profession do something mm-hmm. and enjoy in the field so that that is the uh, that will be best for nature photography so what do you want to check is lot of people are now especially a lot of wildlife photographers are now moving into video field and you are someone who i feel is not touched that part so you yeah, have anything in mind about no no video? not yet not yet i don't enjoy uh, uh, video photography so no uh, i mean not uh, but do you have any plans in no not, not not i never any, thought about this so you want to concentrate on the core photography aspect of you yeah yeah, yeah. so at this point of time like you told you don't have uh, thoughts of going into video and all stuff uh, at this point of time if you want to make a decision on like you want to stick to a particular ecosystem or a species that you want to work for a longer period what would that be like what is that you have in your mind when it comes to finding some i, ju- I just uh, f- finished ice diving so i i no i mean i mean the thing uh, which is now making me uh, excited mm-hmm. definitely is <laughs> ice diving so i'm just planning to dive in poles i mean like antarctica or uh, arctic so that leads to a point where in uh, the current ongoing work that you have right now is 100 days of himalaya yeah. you are you are doing this work with uh, santanu mm-hmm. and i recently picked up this magazine savers i uh, think you are a part of this yeah. and we had this um, article about uh, music in the mountains okay so how did this idea come up like how this 100 days of himalaya himalaya like what's the idea behind this no actually uh, me and shantanu was uh, just thinking to do something interesting mm-hmm. and definitely we have a common uh, place of interest uh, in himalaya so i worked for long so he also uh, uh, traveled he trekked mm-hmm. before in uh, mountains so we thought let's do something in himalaya mm-hmm. but uh, really we didn't have any a particular plan even not now so now this time what are we are doing whatever we are uh, in, uh, encountering we just uh, he is taking some videos something he is interacting with people and i am just uh, 
taking photos of everything and anything, mm -hmm. whatever I'm getting. It's not like my other trips. Okay. So that that's my, I, the, you know, uh, when you are working something, uh, uh, if you want to get something new, you have to apply some changes. So this is a kind of things where I just, I mean, I just change my style of work. Yeah. Uh, like it, it's a, a daily travel trip. I am uh, traveling very fast. Mm -hmm. I'm not giving time for particular subject mm -hmm. or particular place or particular thing. Okay. So it's like just moving like a tourist and whatever I'm uh, encountering, I'm uh, documenting. So, so we can actually the thing the the goal we can at uh, end end of the day we can uh, catch the catch one particular time mm -hmm. uh, uh, of Himalaya say 2016 Himalaya in 2016. Okay. okay. Yeah. So if somebody work after 10 years, mm -hmm. they can see the change. They can uh, you know make out the change. Sometime in future. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Probably five, ten years yeah, down the line, yeah. somebody wants to do 100 days yeah, similar again. Exactly. They can have a reference thing. Yeah. So uh, that leads to me uh, my final question for you, which is like uh, I just want to know from you and like a message for all our viewers, like the aspiring wildlife photographers and nature photographers. Is there any specific message you want to give who wants to get into this wildlife photography thing? And like, what is your uh, take on? For nature photography, I, I I I can say to the newcomers, mm -hmm. the the main thing you enjoy it, mm -hmm. and just take out all competitions because this is very much subjective things. Uh, we have a lot of things to do. Don't don't go where other photographers are going, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, enjoy the journey. Don't don't uh, think for the goal. I mean the result what you will get either from money, name or whatever it is, uh, better to enjoy the, uh, the the path and the, so, so it, you know, you just, uh, it take it very philosophically, just uh, keep your mind very calm and quiet and just enjoy it. So that's all. And don't definitely the, uh, whatever you do, so we are doing for uh, basically the nature. Yeah. So we just we have to take the call. So that uh, we shouldn't cross the uh, limit where nature can be damaged by us. Mm -hmm. So definitely that is one point to keep on uh, the back of your mind always. Okay. Cool. So that's really fantastic. Thanks a lot for your inputs. Yeah, thank and, you. Uh, good luck for all your future trips and endeavors. Uh, hope to catch up with you again. Not in between four walls, but yeah, out in field. We'll <laughs> yeah. catch up. So folks, hope you liked the very first episode of Confab with Shiv. If you liked the video, please make sure that you share it with your friends. And most importantly, subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.